Hello, and welcome to our panel discussion, Study Law, Change the World at ANU. My name is Tiger Lin, and I'm a Bachelor of Laws, Honours, and Politics, Philosophy, and Economics student here at the ANU. Today, we'll be exploring some of the reasons that make Canberra and ANU the perfect place to study law. We'll preview some of the programs and touch on some of the opportunities that set ANU apart as Australia's national law school. First, I'd like to acknowledge and celebrate the first Australians on whose traditional lands we gather, that's the Ngunnawal and Ngambri peoples here in Canberra. And I'd like to pay my respects to elders past and present. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce our panel. Associate Professor Heather Roberts is an award-winning educator and a Discovery Early Career Researcher Award Fellow. And Associate Professor Wayne Morgan is the Associate Dean Education and Interdisciplinary Scholar. Iris Wang is an international student from China and second year Juris Doctor candidate. And Nicole King is the manager of the college's Student Administration Services team. Now, Wayne, I'd like to start with you. ANU offers dozens of degree programs, so why study law? Thanks, Tiger, and hello, everybody who's joined us today. Um, well, Tiger, the first reason is because our graduates just do remarkable and extraordinary things. Uh, it never ceases to amaze me, uh, the things that our graduates do, uh, whether that's overseas, in places like the World Bank or the UN in Geneva or New York, or indeed, whether it's running their own NGO program uh, that might happen to be, you know, in the Middle East, helping refugees, um, or back here in Australia in terms of a variety of different governmental or private practice uh, careers. So, yeah, the first reason is because of the remarkable futures that I think our graduates have. Uh, it really does mean change the world, uh, and I mean that sincerely. Apart from that, there are obviously a number of other reasons why ANU would be a fantastic choice. Uh, of course, we are regularly ranked in the top 20 in terms of law schools globally. And this is no mean feat when you consider the thousands of law schools there are around the world uh, and in the top uh, five in Australia. Uh, we have academics who are world famous in terms of their expertise and their research strengths in a wide variety of different areas, particularly public and international law, but not only those sorts of strengths, in a wide variety of other research areas as well. Uh, apart from that, and building what I said earlier, our alumni, we have 22,000, in excess of 22,000 uh, graduates globally. So there really are advantages in joining that sort of truly international network of graduates. Uh, and as I said before, the career opportunities. Uh, overall, we have very high uh, graduate employability. Uh, and during our degree, we have a number of really rewarding work integrated learning opportunities like internships and clinics. Um, so those are just some of the reasons, uh, Tiger, where, why, um, yeah, ADU Law is a great place to study. Awesome. Thanks so much for that overview, Wayne. And I know one of my friends um, is very keen to be off to Washington, D.C. for the World Bank internship in a few months' time. I think she's all vaccinated and ready to go. Um, now, Nicole, can you tell us more about the programs available at the ANU College of Law, including some of the new admission requirements in 2021-2022? Uh, Sure. Yes. Yeah, so our one and only undergraduate degree program is our Bachelor of Laws Honours uh, with Embedded Honours. And our admissions for that next year uh, has moved around a little bit in the last few years. It was 98 two years ago, 96 last year. So the lucky number for next year is 97. Um, so a 97 ATAR will get you straight in to a Bachelor of Laws Honours at ANU um, as our only undergraduate degree. We can, of course, um, offer much flexibility with that. And the most common way that our students study our Bachelor of Laws is with the FDD program, which is our flexible double degree program, which means you can double it up with one of about 30, 32 options I think we're up to now um, with other degrees across the university. Um, so we can help you with that. Um, um, and that's the way you can you can study a, a undergraduate degree with us at law. Uh, in our postgrad space, we have our JD, uh, which is our, um, our master's degree program that allows you uh, to uh, get the um, academic side that you need to practice law in a similar way to our LLB. Our GPA for our JD next year is five to get into the program. In fact, five is pretty much the magic number for entry in any of our uh, postgrad courses or most of them. 
Um, then we have three master's programs now. We've got our Master of Laws, which is our straight master's that we run for um, the GPA of that is also five. And within that master's program, you can do now up to five specialisations. So you can choose the area of law that you might want to focus on, um, everything from commercial and corporate, private, public, uh, international, and we have a new new technologies and human security as well. So we've got a really broad range of subjects available in our master's space. Um, if you're interested in uh, financial management and law, that's a brand new one that we opened this year. So that's a Master of Financial Management and Law, where we sort of team up with CBE to dual deliver that. And that's our College of Business and Economics. So if that's of interest, uh, that's also a GPA of five, and that's a two-year master's program. And then our Master of International Law and Diplomacy is the final one, uh, where we've teamed up with our, our uh, colleagues at the College of Asia and Pacific to, to offer that one. And that GPA is also five. Um, if your GPA is a little short in that space and you wanted to come in and do either the JD or, the, or any of our laws masters, um, we have what's known as our graduate certificate of law. And that's um, a program where you can enter that course uh, or enter that program with a GPA of four. Um, so that one's been around for a long time. And then combined with that, we've got a brand new um, certificate of international law. Um, sorry, a certificate. Uh, I've written down the wrong thing here. Uh, help me out, someone. I've got a blank. New technologies now. law. Thank new you. Graduate certificate of new technologies law. Thank you. I've written international by accident. It's also a GPA of four. Um, and the difference between the claw our, our normal grad cert and our new one is that the um, the new one is completely online. So if you didn't couldn't get to Canberra or um, didn't want to necessarily uh, transfer your whole life to Canberra, you can certainly study that one online if you wish. Um, so, yeah, so that's it in a nutshell. All of our programs uh, for entry next year, um, Tiger. I think that's all I had to add there. Um, and I guess the only other thing I will add quickly is a lot of questions. What if I don't get the 97 ATAR? Been a big one this morning in our in our chat rooms. Um, and I guess there is another way through the door. In fact, you can come to ANU and study another degree that would probably potentially be part of your flexible double degree. So you could start maybe your arts part, or your international diplomacy, whatever you were doing. Um, as you double up in your flexible double and then after 12 months we need a GPA of 5.6 um, so once you had that GPA internally you can then transfer and do your your law part of the um, double degree so that's another way in and in fact really popular I think this year we had 93 students transfer in to start the law part of their program this year. Wow, fantastic. Thanks so much, Nicole. Um, and thank you, and thank you, Wayne. <laughs> and Wayne, yes. <laughs> um, it's great that there's so many opportunities like that out there. And I think especially some of these new degrees um, and new programs that we've offered are, are very exciting. Yes. Um, now, for me, coming to Canberra from Melbourne was probably one of the best decisions I made uh, for many reasons. Um, but there are many specific advantages linked to studying law here, including our recognition that studying law doesn't always have to be about churning out papers and sitting exams. Now, Heather, can you tell us some more about uh, the more creative pieces of assessment you've assigned in classes, I think particularly in your uh, comparative Supreme Court class? Yeah, thanks, Tiger. Uh, listen, I'm an ANU law grad myself, uh, so I just want to echo everything Wayne said and also remind everybody there really is nowhere else to study law in Australia if you want to understand how Australian law works, national law works. And of course, we're the home to the High Court of Australia. So our students go walking around to the High Court, you know, in their lunch times. My course was comparing the history, biography and operation of the High Court of Australia and the uh, Supreme Court of the US. Uh, so many people know about the Supreme Court, but I really wanted to encourage students to dig deep in their understanding of the High Court. And rather than just do an essay or an assignment, my course was uh, designed around the recognition that people do law for a whole range of reasons, as you, as you said, Tiger, and also modern lawyers need a whole range of skills. It's not enough to be able to write a letter to a client now or appear in court. You need to be able to communicate uh, complex ideas to a whole range of people. And so I encourage the students when they were thinking about the differences and similarities between the High Court and the US Supreme Court to think about communicating to a whole range of audiences. So I had students do podcasts like The Law Report, um, doing detailed uh, podcast interviews or uh, commentaries on different comparative elements. Students looked at uh, creating websites to try and introduce some of the ideas around the history uh, and importance of those two courts. 
uh, students created plays. They uh, made children's books for primary school students to try and explain the details and operation of these institutions to a really young audience. And if you look on uh, Amazon, Tiger, you said that looking at Amazon at the moment in lockdown is always a, a fun and important part of staying sane. Absolutely. The, U the US has so much literature and information, a whole range of resources about what the US Supreme Court does, but there's virtually nothing written um, for children in Australia about what our courts do. And the students in um, comparative Supreme Courts made incredible storybooks and teacher materials for uh, primary school teachers to encourage young kids to think about the law, what it means, who we want to be judges and how we want the legal system to operate. So it was uh, eye-opening for me to see the creativity of the students and it was an opportunity for them too to develop new skills that they'll be able to use uh, after graduation in whatever job they take up. Amazing. Thanks so much, Heather. And I, I wish, I hope you run this course again very soon because it sounds absolutely amazing. Um, now, adapting to online learning is something we've all had to navigate as students over the past 18 months, although our situation in Canberra has been much more favourable than in many other Australian cities, as I can personally attest. Um, Iris, can you tell us about your experience as a student and perhaps also as an international student during this period, including any support services you found to be useful? Thank you, Tiger. To be honest, I didn't actually realize that it's been 18 months since we moved online. I, I think this uh, actually reflects the fact that online learning is just not as scary or uh, intimidating as we thought. And actually, I found myself quite enjoy studying online. I think one reason is that ANU, there are so many forms of online learning and it will never get boring. For example, there are pre-recorded lectures, uh, Zoom live seminars and tutorials where we can uh, discuss questions with our tutors and classmates or like raise any concerns or questions. Um, I feel like the combination of these different formats just make the learning process much easier and full of fun. I mean, like with the recordings, I can arrange my study time very flexibly. Um, this just to say that I don't need to worry about the enrollment issues. I, I say goodbye to the day that I sit in front of my laptop, keep refreshing the enrollment system just to get a spot that fit my schedule. So I think um, this flexibility is really important important for me um, because I also get other commitments, for example, like works to do. And also with the recordings, I can go back forth and uh, forwards. So I can uh, listen to a particular part uh, repeatedly. And if I still don't get, a, get it, I can raise the questions um, on the tutorial rooms. And the other reason that um, I like online learning is that there are so many uh, supporting services I can get. I mean, both from ANU and from the law college itself. Uh, for the former, there are like uh, ANU consulting to support our mental health. It's free and confidential. So I know that uh, there's always someone I can turn to, I can talk to if I feel unwell or feel stressful. Also for international students, there are English and wellbeing enhancement series. So there are a lot of workshops to do to in, uh, in develop our English skill and we can get individual feedbacks from the teachers. I highly recommend this program and it helped me a lot. And at the college, there are uh, peer assisted learning, which are program for the first year law school that's run by later year students mentor. Um, it's informal, it's uh, relaxed. And the mentors just share their first hand experience about how to survive a law school and we can share our stories as well. And the college also offers its own well-being and resilience in law program. So I wouldn't say that um, online learning is the same as traditional face-to-face -face classes because they are different, but I'll definitely say that online learning has its own strengths and I do enjoy it very much so far. Yes, it's uh, my experience on this. Thanks so much, Iris. That's fantastic. And you know, it's always great to know that there are these support services out there for all students. Um, now, I think we're actually doing quite well for time. So, Heather, perhaps you could tell us a bit about the Visiting Judges Program and how it enriches the student experience, because I personally have, I, have, I think, been a beneficiary of this. You know, we've had a few judges come into class and co-teach classes, and it's been so, so useful um, to ameliorate the, the learning you get. Yeah, thanks, Tiger. Listener, a large part of what you do in law school is obviously studying what judges say and how they hand in the decisions and, and reason through particular problems. 
And so one of the things the visiting judges program is designed to do is to demystify that process. It used to be that you would get a case and you would see what was written and you'd never have a sense of the individual who was uh, making those decisions, what their career might have been, how they got to the, the position they, they were in. So we're so fortunate at ANU Law to work very closely with the National Judicial College of Australia. So that's the peak training body for judges after they've been appointed to the bench. And working closely with them, we have judges from all around the country, from a whole range of courts, come into ANU or, or Zoom in now to contribute to classes um, and talk about particular cases they've decided or particular areas of law that they're experts in. But for me, more important than that substance is the individual contact that students at ANU can have with a whole range of judges, state, territory, federal judges, to just talk to a human being who is a judge, figure out what's involved, their career pathways, how you might apply to be an associate after graduation, which uh, congratulations, Tiger, I know is on your career pathway as well. And these are really important ways in which we can demystify the process uh, and really bridge the, the uh, student legal practice um, boundaries. So it's an exciting and continuing program. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Heather. Now, finally, if we can quickly whip around the panel, what advice would you all give students on making the most of their law studies at ANU? Wayne, would you like to go first? Uh, thanks, Tiger. Yeah, so it's all about connection. Um, and we have students from all around the country and as well as international students as well. Uh, we also have an awful lot of stuff that happens outside the formal curriculum. So things like our law reform and social justice program, things like the visiting judges program that uh, Heather has just mentioned, uh, a whole range of activities, uh, both formal and informal, that allow people to make those connections. It's through connections we learn. So, yeah, if you do come to ANU Law, um, remember to make the most of those connections, even if they are online like they currently are. So true. Iris? Yeah, I'll say that uh, don't be afraid. I mean, studying law can be intimidating, especially uh, when it comes to international students, when you learn it, uh, you know, use your second language. But you'll never know what you can do or like what your potentials are. So um, my advice would be uh, don't be afraid of making mistakes. And uh, there are so many opportunities at NU and don't be afraid to reach out. And yeah, don't miss it. Great advice. Nicole? Yep, uh, Iris just sort of took a bit of my thunder there. My big um, plea to all of you thinking of studying law is please don't be afraid to reach out. I think that's the, the best advice I can give you. Um, we're really lucky at law in that we have one email address um, that we have that we monitor for all our student um, questions, no matter what it might be. And it's really simple. It's inquiries.law at anu.edu.au. So anything at all, there is no silly question ever. Um, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, and as Wayne said, uh, it never ceases to amaze me. I mean, when I went to university a long, long time ago, um, the opportunities were really different. Uh, but the opportunities that you have as a law student at ANU are, are just, yeah, endless. So many things to get involved with um, and any questions at all, as I said, or any support that you need. If that website's too hard to navigate, if you just don't know where to go, uh, we have all of those questions. So all you need to do is send that one email to that one email address and we're here to support you. Amazing. Heather? Be curious. I endorse everything everyone else said. But while you're at ANU, whether it's virtually for a while or I'm sure it will be face-to-face -face very, very soon, just be curious. There is so much going on in campus well beyond the law school. Everything happens here. You, know, you could do your entire degree and have nine to five expert lectures from, you know, people throughout the uh, academic world who are the key people in their fields. You could learn so much on a daily basis. So just be curious, go to a lecture by a guest in, you know, in biology, learn something about something you know nothing about. Keep going to all of the uh, guest lectures that come into ANU and, um, and the law school, take advantage of all of the opportunities uh, and just enjoy the fact that you're on a campus, virtual or face-to-face, that uh, has proven that their graduates go the most amazing places. So be curious and enjoy every single second because uh, talking from someone who studied here, it really is the best place to be. 
So true. Thanks, Heather. And I think to echo everyone, just be active in seeking out these opportunities and don't be afraid to get involved. Now, thank you everyone for joining us both virtually um, and I guess all virtually uh, to learn more about studying law at ANU. A reminder that we have many informative pre-recorded online videos produced for today that can be viewed via the ANU Open Day website. These sessions include a masterclass on space law, panel discussions on clinical programs, internships and careers, a 360 degree video tour of the ANU College of Law, nice, and the debut episode of a podcast I co-host, Maddie and Tiger Tackle Law School, where we've tried to capture a snapshot of law student life at the ANU, presented as what I hope is a pleasurable listening experience. You can also learn more by speaking to our staff and students via the available Zoom rooms, setting up a tour once we regain some normality or by visiting our website. Thanks very much and we hope to see you soon at ANU.